po sa inyong lahat. Wow, nakakatuwa naman. It's a privilege. Yes, privilege. Nakakatuwa. Kaya naiyak ako kanina. Kasi para ba, gusto ko na rin mag-stand up for Jesus. For a while, kasi nagpapasalamat ako sa Panginoon. Na, <laughs> Salamat <laughs> pa, salamat ako sa Panginoon for the, the opportunity. Kasi sabi ko noon, nung the first time na sinabi sa amin nung pastor namin na, sige, let's train you for train, for training. So sabi ko, Lord, parang I'm not deserving. Kasi para bang, alam mo namang hindi ka perfect, you're still doing a lot of things na hindi ka ay-ay sa Panginoon. But then, then, I was reminded, yung mga characters sa Bible, di ba, hindi rin naman sila perfect eh. But God called them. And who God called, He equips So, kapag tayo pa ay tinawag ng Panginoon to do something for His kingdom, hindi papalya yung provision ng Panginoon para magampanan natin yung assignment. Palaging nandun yung feeling na kakulangan, parang hindi ka worthy, hindi ka deserving, pero si Lord ang gagawa sa yung worthy, gagawa sa ating worthy to be able to do whatever it is that will give Him glory. Amen? Okay, so, start po muna tayo. So, So, um, actually, sa UAE kasi, nag-start na kami ng series. Meron kaming series na ang title ay Make His Heart Our Heart and Walk Like Jesus Walk. Okay? So, ang anchor verse po niya ay galing sa 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. Ang sinabi po doon ay, Whoever claims to live as a Christian must live as Jesus did. So, kung tayo po ay nag-proclaim na tayo ay mga Christian, nakikita po ba sa buhay natin? sa mga gawain natin, sa mga actions natin, in our deeds, can they see the Lord Jesus Christ? Is it exactly the same way Jesus did it when He was alive? Sabi kasi dito, very clear, whoever claims to live as a Christian uh, must live as Jesus did. So kung Kristiyano ka, dapat same pala kayo ng pamumuhay ni Jesus Christ. Medyo ang taas ng expectation, no? <laughs> ang taas ng expectation. That's why we're having these preachings. Kasi gusto natin malaman, ano nga ba yung nasa puso ni Jesus Christ? Kaya ganun yung buhay niya. ba? Diba? Meron akong isang member sa UAE. And when we were discussing yung Proverbs, ang favorite niya doon yung Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Ayan. Sa, 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 ano, above all else, sa lahat ng bagay, ano daw natin, i-guard daw natin yung ating puso. Dahil doon ang gagaling lahat ng ating ginagawa. So, ibig sabihin kung medyo magaspang ang ating ugali, <laughs> malamang there's some problem within. There's a problem in our hearts. Okay? So, kung idol po natin si Jesus Christ, sab- gusto naman natin si Jesus Christ maging kagaya niya, di ba? If you really look at Him, pa-amaze talaga tayo sa buhay niya. Even though he, we only read about Him in the Bible, para bang amazing. How He could have done everything in those three years sa kanyang ministry. Okay? So, ang sabi po dito, kapag, halang, kapag daw, halimbawa, um, tayo po ay gusto nating mabuhay na kagaya ni Jesus Christ, we have to check our hearts first. And we have to check His heart. Ano kayang diferensya? Ang sabi po ng Panginoon sa Ezekiel, so sa Ezekiel, so it's a book in the Bible, kinausap niya yung mga Israelitas. Ang sabi niya sa mga Israelitas, I will, sabi dito, um, I will give you a new heart, bibigyan niya raw ng heart na bago yung mga Israelites, and put a new spirit in you. I will remove you from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. So, ibig sabihin pala yung mga Israelitas before, they have a heart which is different from God. So, ang sabi ng Panginoon, papalitan ko yan ang puso mo. Ang puso mong bato. Ayan, ang puso mong bato, papalitan ko yan ang heart of flesh. And this heart will make you follow everything that I want for you. Wow! Sino gusto ng heart transplant na yon na nanggagaling sa ating Panginoon? Because I want, <laughs> amen? So gusto natin mapalitan kung ano man yung hindi kaay-aya sa ating puso, di ba? Magkaroon tayo ng magandang puso, ng puso ng ating Panginoon. Okay? Amen. So this afternoon, let us prepare ourselves and welcome the Lord in our midst. So manalangin ko muna tayo para mawala yung kabako. <laughs> Sige, you can stay seated. Okay, so let's pray. 
Yes, Lord, hallelujah, God. We praise and thank you, Panginoon, for this wonderful afternoon, Lord God. And like once again, Panginoon, we welcome you in our midst, Lord God, as we prepare our hearts, Panginoon, sa pakikinig sa inyong mga salita. Lord, I ask, Panginoon, for you to continue to anoint my lips, Lord God. Lord, nagawin niyo po akong um, vessel, Panginoon, channel, Lord God, for your message para po sa akin at para sa aming lahat, Panginoon. Lord, uh, let me decrease while you increase, Panginoon, sa aming kalagitan, Lord. God. And Lord, may your your message, Panginoon, be really, be loud and clear sa aming lahat, Panginoon. Na talagang marinig namin your very point, Panginoon, sa mensaheng ito, Lord God. Your revelations, your insight, Panginoon. And may we welcome, Panginoon, maging uh, ready heart namin to receive your message, Lord God. Kung ano man yung rebuke, Panginoon, ay bibigay nyo sa amin this afternoon. May we have open hearts, Panginoon, pati na rin isipan namin, Lord God, para makinig at tanggapin kung ano man yung mensahe na yun, Lord God. Maraming salamat po. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So, bago po tayo magsalipa, para hindi kayo masyadong seryoso. Seryoso kayo masyado eh. <laughs> so, yeah. O, first time nila. Seryoso kayo masyado. Ang mag-experiment mag tayo ng konti. Ayan. Experiment tayo ng konti. So, ipapapakita ko sa inyo ng ilang pictures. Okay? Pictures of people. Tapos, um, I want you to, when you see it, mayroong words na may mayroong papasok sa isip niya, di ba? So, take note of the words that come uh, that come out, come up in your minds pagkakitang-pagkakita niya ng mga pictures na to. Okay? Tingnan natin. Ah! So, ano po yung ating nakikita? Okay? Ayan. So, medyo mula yung tatlo si Kuya. <laughs> Colorful. Okay, so the next picture. Ayan. Okay, so next. Si ate, ano kang ginagawa ni ate? No? And then, the last one. Ay, masyado silang masaya. Okay, so I have just shown you pictures of people. Okay, yung isa, masyado maraming tattoo. Yung isa naman, um... Parang nahirap siya, no? Yung black guy. Tapos yung isa naman, babae sa isang madilim na iskinita na nakamini skirt. <laughs> diba? May inihintay ata siya. Tapos yung pang-apat naman, eh, ito mga pictures na to. So, I'm sure, as soon as you saw these pictures, meron agad kayong naisip about these people. Diba? Meron nabuo agad dyan. Ah, okay. So, yung atin po, yung mga pinakita ko sa atin, mga nabuo sa ating mga isipan, has something to do with the title of our message today. Okay? So, ang title po ng ating preaching for today is Christ versus Prejudice. Dealing with Prejudice, the Jesus way. Ayan. So, ang anchor verse po natin is yung sinabi ni Jesus Christ sa kanyang mga disciples in John chapter 13, verse 34, A new command I give you, love one another, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Sabi niya, kung gaano kayo kayo, 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 kayo minahal, gano'n nyo rin mamahalin ng isa't isa. Wow. Okay? At ang ating pong scripture reading will be coming from, medyo mahaba-haba, 1 to 42. <laughs> 1 to 42. Pero it's a very popular story actually. And I'm sure for most of you, alam nyo na yung sa Samaritan woman, yung na ni Jesus Christ. But let me just read it as fast as I can. Okay? Para hindi kayo baka atukin kayo pagka-ending na ng 42. Okay, let me just read. Now, when the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sikar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, 
You don't have anything to draw water with and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty, nor I have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know, what we, we worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with a woman. But no one said, what do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her jar, water jar and went away into town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the town and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do, don't, you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say there are four, there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, I lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here he say, uh, for here the saying, Holds true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for which you did not labor, others have labored, and now you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard ourselves, and we know that it's, this is indeed the Savior of the world. Okay? Thank you, Lord. Ayan, haba. Naalala niyo pa ba yung simula? <laughs> okay. So, um, bigyan ko lang kayo ng konting background dun sa story. So, si Jesus po ay galing sa Jerusalem. Kung titingnan po natin yung mapa ng Israel, so nasa baba ang Judea, nandun po yung Israel, tapos nasa gitna ang Samaria, tapos ang nasa taas yung Galilee. Okay? So you have, in order for you to go from um, Judea to Galilee or Galilee to Judea, the shortest way is to diretso, di ba? Nadaan ka lang doon sa gitna, so may Samaria. But unfortunately, during that time, hindi sila okay. Yung mga taga-Samaria at saka yung mga Jew or yung mga Hudyo, hindi nila pilang isa't isa. And there's a reason why. Okay? So, no unang panahon, ang tagal, no? Ganun, meron may, may, tayong mga ganun minsan sistema. Ayaw natin sa isang tao because of something that happened long, long time ago. <laughs> okay, so ganun din yung nangyari sa kanila. So, what happened is, many, many years ago, yung Israel po na hati, after si King Solomon, kilala po natin si King Solomon, di ba? So, after ni King Solomon maging hari, ang nangyari po sa Israel is na-divide. Nagkaroon ng Northern Kingdom at saka Southern Kingdom. Okay? Tapos po, yung mga taga Samaria ay napunta dun sa isang sa mga kingdoms na yon. And then after that, 
nagkaroon po ng pinanish yung mga Israelites ng, ng, ng Diyos. Kasi medyo pasaway sila. Actually, parang tayo din. Kaya minsan binibigyan tayo nila yung discipline. <laughs> okay, so pinanish sila ng Lord. So, inoccupy sila ng mga foreigner. Nagpunta sa Israel, tapos kinuha sila, ganyan-ganyan. So, the exile, so nag exile sila, dinala sila dun sa ibang bansa. So, the exile lasted for 70 years. Tagal, di ba? So, imagine mo kung 70 years, during that period, ang nangyari po eh, yung ibang mga taga Samaria, yung mga Jews na nakatira sa Samaria, nag-asawa. Parang nag-asawa ng foreigner, parang ngayon, di ba? Misa nag-aasawa ng ibang lahi. So, nagkakaroon ng... Ang nangyari ngayon, ayaw ng mga Jews yung mga ganun. Kasi for them, the people na inasawa ng mga taga Samaria are considered Gentiles. Kasi hindi sila Hudyo eh. So, iba, iba yung kanilang paniniwala, naniniwala sa pagan gods. So, para sa mga Jews, it's a no-no. Kaya sa kanila, nung bumalik na sila after the exile, they, they all went back to Israel. Nung bumalik na sila, ang nangyari is, yung mga Jews, ayaw na nila sa mga taga Samaria. Kasi masyado na silang nang parabang, ay, hindi ko na, hindi na namin sila feel kasi, ang tawag dito, they are not clean. They are not pure anymore. di ba? May halo na sila eh. And actually, that is correct. Because the Samaritan people started to worship yung God na rin, yung kanilang mga asawa. So, that is sila, naniniwala sila kay God, so they were following the, the, the law. Pero, nung nagkaroon sila ng asawa, gano'n naman talaga, di ba? Kung magkaiba naman kayo ng paniniwala, most probably, yung paniniwala mo, may iba rin ng konti. Kasi mahaluan na. So, gano'n yung nangyari sa kanila. So, after that, so the Jews are very particular about Purity. Oh, kailangan talaga. Ito lang yung ginagawa natin. Pag hindi tayo malinis, we cannot really come to God. So, ang nangyari noon is, kapag magtatravel sila from Judea, kapunta sa Galilee, or from Galilee to to Judea, ina-avoid nila. Nag-long cut sila. Ibig sila mag-shortcut. Imagine nyo nung time na yun, wala pang kotse. Oh, imagine wala pang kotse noon. Di ba? <laughs> wala pang Uber. Oh. At saka kung may Uber din, magbabayad sila ng mahal. Biling sila magbayad ng mahal. <laughs> Wag lang talaga silang dadaan dun sa mga sa village ng Samaria, di ba? Ganun nila kahit, magbabayad na ako ng mahal, papamasahe. Basta hindi lang ako dadaan dun sa mga yun kasi ayaw ko sa kanila. Ganun, sin, ganun nila kahit yung mga uh, Samaritans. At yung mga Samaritans, syempre nagalit na rin sila. Grabe kasi nyo kaming i-judge. Diba? So, from then on, nagkaroon na sila ng hatred towards each other. Okay? So, nangyari yun, hundred years, years, many, many generations before. And yung hatred, or yung tinatawag nating prejudice, was passed on from one generation to the other. Okay? So, ano nga ba yung prejudice? Ayan. Kasi yung title ko, diba? Christ versus prejudice. Anong po ba natin ang ibig sabihin ng prejudice? Okay? So, nanggaling daw siya sa Latin word. Mahihirapan ako sabihin, pero I will try. Prejudicium. Ayan. So, it, 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 two words. Pre means before. Tapos, yung judicium naman means judgment. So, ibig sabihin, giving judgment before. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, nagbibigay ka ng judgment. Oh, wala pa nga. Ayun. So, sabi din dito, it's a preconceived opinion that is not based on reason. So, wala naman ba si Han? Yung, yung, yung opinion mo about that certain person or certain group of people. Okay? Actually, meron akong nabasang article. Ang sabi, ang prejudice daw ay talaga naka-hardwired sa ating mga brains. Oo. Kasama yan sa ating parang pag-evolve or pag-adapt. Kung mga para bang, initially, ang ano dun is parang to give us warning. Na halimbawa, pag alam mo kapag sa, sa, um, sa isang madamong area, kung mag alert ka na, lahat ng mga madaming, madamong area, may mga ahas. Alam mo yun? So, mag-iingat ka. Okay? So, ang nangyari ngayon, medyo na, na, iba, na, na nasama na ng brain sa ibang mga pangyayari sa buhay natin. And then, we actually... Um, um, ginamit na rin natin yun when dealing with people. Okay? So, meron tayong mga tao na para bang, ay, wag, wag yan kasi mga ganun yan sila eh. Okay? So, in taga, sabi dito, ang ating mga prejudices daw can be either favorable or unfavorable. But most of the time, 
negative. Okay? So, ang nangyayari kasi, dito sa prejudice, nagkakaroon ng you versus me or us versus them. Halimbawa, ang, ang mga Pilipino. Meron ngayon marapit ng eleksyon. Diba? <laughs> merong mga makipakyaw, tapos meron naman makipink, <laughs> tapos meron naman makibongo. O, diba? So, meron sila yun. Diba? Tapos sila din yun. Ito kami. So, makikita natin that there are um, groups na we form and then we, we, we actually assign a certain um, parabang characteristic or Dini define din describe natin yung group na yun. Ano ba yung mga pwedeng ding describe sa mga taga mga kagroup ni Pacquiao? Ano yung masasabi natin? Ay, mga ayan, mga ganun naman, mag mga ganun yan sila. So we try to generalize depending on the group. Okay? So ano nga ba yung basihan ng ating mga prejudices? Saan ba nanggali? Ano ba kaya ba tayo nagagawa ng mga prejudice? So the first one is race. Ayan. Puti, iti, ayan. Tapos, ethnicity. Diba? Kahit sa Pilipinas. Tayo lahat ay mga Pilipino. Pero may may kanya-kanya pa rin. May mga Bisaya. Tapos, meron naman yung mga Maaita. Tapos, meron din tayo, ano, ay, yung mga ano, yung mga kapampangan. Medyo mga ano yung mga yan eh. Diba? Totoo naman. Tapos, itong mga Tagalog, mga ganito yan sila. So, we, we have formed prejudices against certain group of people because of where they belong. Saan ba silang group kasali? Tapos kung ano yung alam natin doon sa group na yun, yun na rin sila. Okay? So next is sex or gender. Ayan. Sa na, na, narinig ko, narinig, madalas ko narinig dahil nag-drive na ako. Madalas ko siya narinig dati. Pag, pag, pag hindi marunong yun nag-drive sa unahan mo, babae. <laughs> pag hindi marunong mag-park ng parallel parking, babae ang tagad. Papapalabas ng labas, papasok na naman. Hindi may pasok yung coach. Babae ang nagdaday. Pag tingin, babae nga. So, para bang may, may ano na connotation na pag babae, hindi talaga magaling mag-drive. So, para bang, bakit ba pinahim? Lalo na rin sa country na to, bago pala nagdadrive yung mga babae. Ah, lalo na tuloy naging ano, ma, ang tawag dito, tension sa kalsada dahil gumami yung mga babae nagdadrive. And then we also have yung mga ang tawag dito, yung mga lalaki. Mga lalaki, babaero yung lahat sila eh. Kasi pag meron ka na nakita mga lalaki, mga babaero yan kasi mga, mga ganon. So we have certain prejudices against the gender as well. Pag halimbawa naman, mga bading. Ah, pag halimbawa sa army. Para mag enroll siya, gusto ko pong mag-army. Ha? Eh? Bading ka eh. Parang nilembot-lembot. So paano ka magiging? Parang kasi iniisip natin, tapos sa army, very tough. Diba? So, hindi pwede. So, we already have certain prejudices that defines other people. Depende kung ano sila. Ano pa po? Age. Palagi ko sabi yung, yung tatay ko palagi sabi about my mom, itong mama mo, ilang beses ko nang tinuturuan kung paano gawin sa cellphone ito hanggang ngayon, hindi pa rin marunong. Pawit-uwit <laughs> na ako. We always say that all people are not very good with technology. Medyo slow, baga. <laughs> Pero hindi, I'm sure hindi lahat yan sila. Right? And then, of course, religion. Ayan. Religion. Malaking, <laughs> malaking issue yan. Ano ba yung mga, ang tawag dito, kahit nga sa mga Christians eh, maraming di bang mga, ano, different groups? Tapos meron din sinasabi, ah, yung mga group nila, ganito yan sila eh. Tapos itong group na yan, mga ganyan. Tapos yung mga Catholics din, may sinasabi rin sa iba. Mga ganito. So we generalize, not knowing really the people who are part of that group. Di ba? Political views. Ayan. Tapos ano po, social class. Mayaman, mahirap. Alibaba kung mayaman ka, tapos may pumasok sa bahay mo, isipin mo agad magdarakaw. Diba? <laughs> kasi kailangan, pwedeng magnakaw. So medyo kaya conscious ka kasi, diba, para bang ganun yung isip mo kasi kailangan nila ng pera. Ikaw, maraming pera, kukunin nila yung pera mo. So we have formed certain, eh, mahirap naman yung mga mayaman, mga matapobre na yung mga, diba? So we already have formed certain opinions about them. Na may masihan ba? Mal malamang hindi ka pa nakakita ng siguro ng tao na gano'n. But because of other people, what other people told you, naniwala ka na din. Okay? So marami pa tayong dagdag. So basta may merong certain group or criteria na magkaiba kayo. Alam ko, I think na among us here, marami tayong groups actually. Kung pag-group natin, siguro... <laughs> Kung pag-groupin natin, siguro, misan ang magka-group silang dalawa. 
or kamamaya ang magka-group silang dalawa, pero sa ibang criteria, ang ka-group naman magkakaiba din. So we all have, we are all very different. Walang isang tao na magkaparehang magkapareha kahit nga kambal, di ba? Magkaiba pa din. Okay? So the reality is, prejudice can exist whenever there is any kind of difference between people. So hindi tayo pwedeng mabuhay ng walang prejudice. So wala rin taong walang prejudice. So we all do have. But eh, kung lahat naman pala tayo eh meron, so <laughs> anong problema? So meron kasi siyang mga negative negative effects if we have very strong prejudice. Yung talagang, ay hindi, hindi ako makikisalamuha sa mga yan kasi mga ganyan sila. Alam mo yung ganun ka talaga ka strong na prejudice against those people. Ano yung mga pwedeng effects nun? So dito, discrimination. Iba po? I, I think man, maalam natin na sa Amerika lalo, I mean, nakita natin yung mga, mga may mga black guys na napatay, di ba, ng mga police, yung inapakan sa ano, si, si George Floyd ba yun? Inapakan sa may leeg, ay di tinuhuran pala sa leeg, tapos namatay din siya. So, a lot of people there are crying over discrimination against them, ng mga Americans, or white Americans actually. Tapos may discrimination din against women. Lalo na dito siguro sa bansang ito. Di ba? Um, before, me women are not allowed to vote. Di ba? Nung unang-unang panahon. So, praise God kasi iba na ngayon. Tapos, ang um, 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 uh, babae pwede na rin maging president. So, they can lead the countries na. Pero before, it was different. Tapos, meron din mga uh, discrimination about refugees. Di ba? Lalo na ngayon sa Europe, maraming mga refugees from war-stricken countries. Pag pumupunta sa kanila, parang ina-isolate talaga nila. They are, tapos, halimbawa, nagpunta ka sa, nag-migrate ka sa ibang bansa. Kasabihin, ay, grabe yung talamaki yung racism dito. Dinidiscriminate kami. Kasi hindi kami taga dito. Okay? And then, so, ang pwede pa rin niyang fear is, pwede tayo magkaroon ng anger at saka hate, kagaya nung sa Jews and Samaritan. Because the Jews were, were prejudiced against the Samaritans at saka yung Samaritans prejudiced din sa Jews, eh ang nangyayari is galit talaga sila sa isa't isa. And you have a divided Israel. Imagine mo nga, oh, nasa gitna yung isa pero dadaan yung isa sa kabila para nang ma-avoid. Okay? And we could also have conflict. Wars. Pag grabe yung prejudice. Diba? Imagine mo yung last, last uh, I think this year, yun yung, nag, yung si Trump. Diba? Yung pinapunta niya sa White House, yung mga pinasugod niya yung mga tao. I mean, people can really do crazy stuff because of their prejudice. Diba? So, uh, lahat ng mga binanggit ko, discrimination, hatred, division, wars, conflict, is something that the Lord is not happy about. Diba? Ay, Jesus Christ, yun, kung time niya yun, maglalakad ako, pupunta ako ng Galilee, liliko pa ako, para lang, Kapagod ba? <laughs> Bakit hindi na lang natin diretsyo? So, in our, in, the, in our passage for today, actually, tinuruan niya, nuturuan, gusto niya tayong turuan on how to deal with our own prejudice. Okay? So, titignan natin kung paano niya dinil yun sa passage, tapos itatry natin. Tignan yung ating prejudices at paano rin natin ididil um, ngayon sa panahon ngayon. Okay? Okay, so ang atin pong gagamit po ako ng acrostic. So, sa search kasi namin, palagi kami gumagamit ng mga letters para mas madaling matandaan. Okay, so ang acrostic po, po natin for today on how to deal with um, um, prejudice the way Jesus did is the word Christ. Ayan, Christ. So Jesus Christ. So yung letter C po is we have to challenge our prejudices. Okay. Sabi po sa Haggai chapter 1 verse 5, sabi dito, Now this is what the Lord Almighty says, Give careful thought to your ways. So ilang beses ko nang nabasa yung, yung book na yan, so kung titignan natin yung mababasa natin yung Bible, ang Haggai ay meron lang two chapters. Ganun lang siya ka, ka, kaiksi. Hindi kagaya na ibang mga books, di ba? Madaming mga chapters. So dito dalawa lang talaga siya. And in that chapter, Ilang beses inulit-ulit ni Lord itong give careful thought to your ways to the Israelites. Kasi during that time, kagwabalik lang nila from the exile. So, bumalik na sila sa Israel. Tapos, meron silang mga hindi magagandang ginagawa. 
So the Lord rebuked them and told them, Give careful way, I uh, give careful thought to your ways. So ang pagtitig na natin sa sarili natin, kailangan daw pala nating pakaisipin yung ating mga ginagawa. We always have to inspect or do a self-reflection sa ating mga ginagawa, sa ating mga deeds, sa ating mga actions. So in terms of our topic today, ang tanong is, are we prejudiced? Are we prejudiced? I think the better question is, am I prejudiced? Okay? At ang tanong na next question is, whom do I hold prejudice against? Kanino naman ako may prejudice? Diba? Una, may prejudice ba ako? Yes. Kanino naman ako may prejudice against? And then, number three is, bakit ako may mga ganong prejudices against them? So, ay, ako nang unang sasagot sa question ko. Am I prejudiced? The answer is yes. Sabihin ko sa inyo yung aking parabang um, a prejudice that I, I am also dealing with. And thank God kasi ito yung uh, topic na naibigay sa akin kasi mas lalong ginano ni Lord sa aking mukha na, anak, you are prejudiced. Um, I'm prejudiced against, against um, Europeans actually and most uh, particularly with British people. Meron akong prejudice against them. Because, kumbaga parabang, nung nasa Pilipinas ako, wala. So, but when I went, moved to UAE, nung limipat ako sa UAE, nakita ko na parabang, um, yung parabang, they always get yung position na mataas, kahit na yung qualification is, mas mataas yung qualification mo, tas yung sweldo nila, pwedeng triple sa sweldo mo. Alam mo yun, just because they have British passport, at saka yung kulay ng, ng skin. So, parabang, in me, na, na, na form na yung sa isip ko na, Itong mga to wala naman tong alam. Ma may passport lang kasi silang British passport. Kaya sila nasa position na to. So, and whenever, whenever someone will, you know, come or introduce themselves, bigla na ano na, na, na sa isip ko na ay may alam kaya to. O dahil malaman ko nga. So, because of that prejudice that I have, mas critical ako sa kanila. Kapag nagkamali sila talaga ini-emphasize ko kaagad. Because I wanted to, sh para bang I wanted to show that no, you're not better than me. Parang ganon. But I would like to ask the Lord for forgiveness. <laughs> Kasi ang ganyan talaga. Meron parin talaga na para bang I don't like them. <laughs> so para bang pa, <laughs> I don't like them. But um, matututo tayo ngayon actually. The Lord also spoke to me sa akin preaching. So the preaching is not just for you, but for all of us. Okay. So. So, sinabi dito, challenge our prejudices. Kung matatandaan natin, si Ernie Baron, palagi niya sinasabi, ano nga ba? Knowledge is power. Ayan, si Ernie Baron. Knowledge is power. So, kailangan malaman po natin, first, kung ano yung ating mga prejudices. Di ba? Kailangan alam natin. Kung, kung kasi kung feeling natin wala tayong prejudice, may magagawa ba tayo? Wala. So, first, I have to acknowledge that I'm prejudiced. Saan ako may prejudice? Ano yung mga prejudices ko? At bakit ako may prejudice against them? Okay? So now, sabi pa nga ni Lord, let us give careful thought to our ways. Sa araw-araw, isipin natin what actually uh, drives yung ating mga prejudices. Okay? So next letter, letter H. Jesus hated division during His time. Ayaw niya ng division. Kaya nga, di ba, instead na sumunod siya sa mga disciples na pumunta siya dun sa Galilee using the longer route, ang ginawa niya hindi, dumiretso siya. Because he doesn't, para bang nonsense naman yung gusto niyong ipagawa sa akin. Eh. Mas mahirap yun, mas matagal. And imagine, Jesus was only here for three years. Di ba, syempre, marami siyang kailangan gawin. Kailangan niyang mag-preach, kailangan niyang magpagaling. So, masyadong busy si Jesus Christ. So, he doesn't want to waste his time Kasi, may, may, hindi may alitan sila. So, makikisali sa doon? Hindi. Ayaw niya ng ganun. So, ganun din tayo. Sinabi rito sa Proverbs chapter 6, uh, verse 16 to 19, meron daw anim that the Lord hates. Tingnan natin, baka mamaya kasama sa ginagawa natin yung ay na yun. So, sabi dito, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, heart that devises wicked schemes. Feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false uh, witness, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Kung tayo yung taong, oo nga, ganyan talaga siya. Ay, parang ganyan na rin yung conflict, di ba? 
support. Oo, oh, support lang. Ay, oo nga. Mm-mm. I agree. Kaya ikaw, huwag ka nang mm, iwasan mo na siya. <laughs> diba? So, we put fire all the more. Dun sa, wala ka, hindi naman, wala naman katotohan na nakikisaw-saw ka pa. <laughs> so, ayaw ni Lord na makisaw-saw tayo doon. Because it causes division. So, ang sabi ni Lord, we have to promote unity. So, hindi na siya nakisali. He did not take sides. Diba? He did not take the sides of the disciples kasi mga disciples, ang mga Jews, they did not take the, the side of the Samaritans kasi mga, kakumbaga, nasa gitna lang siya. He was impartial. Okay? And then, letter R, renew our minds. Ayan. Isa sa mga favorite na verses ko is Romans chapter 12. Pwede nyo rin maging memory verse. Sabi rito uh, sa verse 2, Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of his of your mind. Okay? Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Sabi rito, do not conform to the patterns of the world. Kailangan daw, magkaroon tayo ng renewing of mind. Okay? So, Ay, kita natin, nung bago umamit ni Samaritan woman, yung at si Jesus Christ, meron na siyang certain um, views about herself, about the Jews, at saka yung si, si Jesus Christ na teacher, rabbi kasi siya, at saka yung mga kasaka, ano niya, ka-fellow Samaritans. So, during that time, they, they hate each other, di ba? So, ang nasa, itang, nasa isip ni Samaritan woman is, we hate each other. I hate them. They hate us. Okay? Tapos, ala, na, meron din siyang um, um, a prejudice. Meron na siyang naisip na itong mga kasama ko sa ka- village ko, they hate me. They don't like me. Okay? Ganun na rin isip niya. Tapos, alam niya rin, ay nasa isip niya rin, I'm an outcast. Kung mamabalikan natin yung binasa natin doon, sabi noon ni Jesus Christ sa kanya, go and call your husband, di ba? Nasagot ni Samaritan woman, I don't have a husband. At ang sagot ni Jesus Christ, oo nga, wala kang asawa, kasi nakalima ka na. <laughs> At yung asawa mo ngayon, ay, ay yung kasama mo ngayon, ay hindi mo asawa. Okay? So, alam niya na hindi siya like ng mga tao. Para bang tayo din, kung alam natin, ay ito kung sino-sino yung, yung kapitbahay niyo, <laughs> hindi yung ginagawang masama, ay maganda, di ba? So, we form a certain view about that person. Tapos, ang alam niya din, based sa ating story, is the well na pinuntahan niya, there is water inside that will quench her thirst. Tapos, sinabi din dun sa ating binasa na nag-usap sila about the right place to worship. Ang sabi niya, ang worship place is yung Mount Gerizim, tapos yung mga um, Jews naman is sa Jerusalem. So, dahil nga po nag-away sila that time, Ang nangyari po is, nung nag-aras, nag-away sila that time, yung mga Samaria, hindi na sila allowed to go to Jerusalem para mag-worship. Pinagbawal na yon kasi nga hindi nga sila clean. So, ang ginawa nila, nag-set up sila ng sarili nilang temple dun sa Mount Gerizim. And that is the place where they worship. Okay? Pero, ang nangyari dito... After she encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, she had a renewal of mind. Diba? So, parang tayo din po, before any of us accepted Jesus Christ in our life, we were all taught based on the patterns of this world. Like who belongs in the in-group, sino ba yung mga magagaling, sino yung hindi magaling, sino yung kailangan iwasan. Okay? But now, we know that yung us versus them, or me versus you, is a no-no to our Lord Jesus Christ. Na ayaw talaga doon ng Panginoon. And Jesus Christ wants us to have a renewed mind, just like the Samaritan woman. Kasi nabasa natin na kanina, is nag-iba na rin, di ba? Yung, yung mindset ng babae. Unfortunately, sa manahon ngayon, hindi na tayo pwede magkaroon ng physical encounter with Jesus Christ. Hindi na natin siya pwede ma- that, hanapin natin yung well. <laughs> hanapin natin yung well kung saan na meet yung Samaritan before. No, we cannot no longer have a physical encounter with, uh, um, with Jesus Christ kasi wala na siya, di ba? He ascended to heaven. But, the good thing is, He left us with His words. Tapos, at He left us with His words sa Bible. 
di ba? So ngayon, hindi ka na kailangan pumunta ng well para makahingi ng wisdom from Jesus Christ. Hindi ka na kailangan maghanap ng place to be able to encounter Him. Ngayon, all we have to do is open our Bibles, open our hearts, and our ha- minds, and our eyes, and ears to really listen to what He has to say to us. And slowly, slowly, maiiba na rin, marirenew na rin yung mind natin. The Samaritan woman was very blessed, di ba? Sa opportunity na ilang minuto na personal encounter, imagine mo yun, na-meet mo talaga si Jesus Christ, kung baka parang ngayon, kung merong artista, di ba? So, sobrang excited ka. So, siya din, na-meet niya talaga in person. Pero tayo, pwede pa rin natin ma-encounter si Jesus Christ. At ngayon, hindi na lang ilang minuto lang. Any time of the day, 24 hours, 7 days a week, we can always meet with Him. He can always speak to us through His words. Ayan. So ngayon, kung ano ang problema natin is my mind is not, not right, then we just have to read the Bible. And for sure, I'm 100% sure that we will have a renewal of mind. Kung baga parang si Raquel kanina yun ay sinasabi niya, di ba? Dati, iba yung isip niya about attending this gatherings. Pero after after sitting, listening, reading, na change na ng heart, na change na yung heart niya at na renew na yung mind niya. So yung dating akala niya ay eh, mali pala. Okay? So praise God. So ganoon din po tayo. Maraming gustong ituro ang Lord sa atin. But all we have to do is go and read our Bible. Okay? Kasi pag nagbasa po tayo ng Bible, you know what? Ma- change yung ating ma- change yung ating um, thinking about ourselves. Alam mo yun? Kung halimbawa, you have doubts before about yourself. Kahit sa sarili mo, you are prejudiced siguro. You have doubts about yourself. Pero ngayon, sabihin sa'yo ni Lord who you really are. Because sometimes, we've been living Alam mo yun, mga 30 years old ka na, or even 40, 50 years old, you still don't know yourself. But si Lord, He knows us, and He wants to show, tell us who we really are to Him. Okay? Tapos, kapag nagbasa rin tayo, malalaman natin yung ibang tao. May iba yung isip, yung isip natin about them. Actually, noon, um, eh, magbibigay na ako na isa pang examples from the Bible is, Nung namatay na si Jesus Christ, so yung ginawa ng mga disciples, they started preaching, nagpunta sila sa iba't ibang mga places, tapos merong mga Gentiles na kagaya natin, yung hindi talaga mga Jews, na naniwala. So when when the word was shared to them, they they accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. So nung nalaman yun ng mga Jews, sabi nila, um, hindi pa rin kayo ka, ano eh, sa group namin, eh, iba pa rin kayo eh. So you have to get circumcised. It will be a different topic to preach sa inyo ano ba yung circumcision. Pero sabi nila, kailangan nila mas circumcise para talagang the day will belong na. Yun ang gusto nilang gawin sa lahat ng mga, ng mga hindi tuli during that time. Pero praise God kasi the Lord spoke to the leaders of the church at sinabi, hindi kailangan nila magpa-circumcise. And then they gave the conditions that is required for them to be considered as Christians. So, ang nangyari, nung binigay yun ni Lord sa kanila, they accepted. They had a renewal of mind based on sa sinabi ng Panginoon sa kanila. Amen? So, tayo rin, marami tayong mga maling-maling isipin about ourselves, other people, and even about Him, about God. Natatamay ng ating Panginoon, but only if we read the Bible. Okay, letter I. Letter I, identify similarities rather than focus on our differences. Sabi sa Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So, sino sa atin ang nega? Ang sabi ni, wala ritong nega doon sa sinabi niya sa Philippians, di ba? Lahat, nice, right, pure, lovely. Yung kaaya-aya lang daw. Think about those things. So kapag tayo po ay nag-iisip ng mga negative thoughts, that is not pleasing to the Lord pala. Para naman problema ka masyado itong, ano, kailangan ko magbayad ng ganito, kailangan ko magpatala sa Pilipinas. Ang dayo yung mga stress everyday. Hindi, hindi pala yun ang gusto ng Panginoon para sa atin. 
So kung babalikan po natin yung binasa natin, makikita natin doon that nung nag-uusap si Jesus Christ at saka yung Samaritan, ang palaging sinasabi ng Samaritan, yung differences nila. Kung babalikan natin yung verse 9, sabi nung sama, nung kinasabi ni Jesus Christ, give me a drink, di ba, nandun sila sa may well, tapos dumating yung Samaritan woman, sabi ni Jesus Christ, give me a drink. Ang sabi agad yung Samaritan woman, why are you a Jew asking me, a woman of Samaria, for a drink? Kasi sabi niya, Jew ka, I'm a Samaritan, you're a man, I'm a woman. Nung to, during that time, hindi sila pwedeng gumawa ng ganun. It's a social no-no. Hindi siya acceptable. Kasi nga, mag-aaway ang Jews and Samaritans. And during that time, ang mga babae at lalaki, hindi sila pwede mag-usap. Actually, kahit alimbawa, si Jesus Christ, kung may asawa siya dati, hindi niya nga pwede kausapin yung asawa niya sa labas eh. Bawal, bawal talaga yun. Ganun sila ka-strict na, oh, bawal talaga. Kaya itong ginawa ni Jesus Christ na nakipag-usap siya sa babae na nakaling mga asawa na <laughs> bilang isang sa- taong considered holy, di ba? Parang makikipag-usap ko, limang asawa, tas yung kasama niya nga, hindi niya pa asawa. Ano mo yun, parang bang outcast talaga. Tapos sinabi pa nung babae, ah, di ba, yung kayo nag-worship kayo dun sa Jerusalem, eh kami dito kami nag-worship eh. So parang palaging sinasabi nun ni Samaritan woman, magkaiba tayo. Bakit pa tayo nag-uusap na ganito, eh magkaiba tayo. Pero ang ginagawa ni Jesus Christ, may kita natin na ayaw niya mag-focus dun sa differences. Yung sinabi ng babae na, Jew, Jew, uh, Jew ka eh, Samaritan woman ako eh, bakit ka sa akin humihingi ng tubig, di ba? Bakit ka humihingi ng favor sa akin? Pang sabi ni Jesus, tas nag-start na si Jesus Christ about yung thirst, di ba? Yung well, na malalim daw, sabi ng babae, tapos sabi ni Jesus Christ, I can give you living water, di ba? Tapos, sin- sinabi rin ni Jesus, nung sinabi ni Samaritan woman about worshiping in Jerusalem and worshiping in uh, Mount Gezerim, yung sa kanila, magkaiba rin ang worship nila, sabi ni Jesus Christ, actually, it doesn't matter where you worship. It doesn't matter where you worship because there will come a time when you will worship the Father in, in spirit and in truth. So, it doesn't matter kung saan tayong mag-church. Saan natin siya sasambahin. Ang gusto niya yung attitude ng ating heart. And if we are really communing with Him, kung tayo po ay nagsisimba at umuupo lang sa simbahan dati, at marapit na. <laughs> Oo, oh, oh, marapit na. Tapos, sa tayo po po na isipin mo, saan tayo kakain? Outer, <laughs> outer magsimba. O saan tayo po po, tapos tayo SM. <laughs> Di ba? Kasi ano, para bang, you just want to take that part of the task para maging mabuting Christian. Na? Sige, check na natin yan. Pero ang gusto ni Jesus Christ, ni God, is for us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. To really commune with Him, open our hearts to Him. Yung talagang maka, maka, um, maka, ano nga ba yun sa Tagalog? Ba yun? Nalimutan ko na. Basta we, be able to commune with Him. Ay, gusto ko sana Tagalogin, hindi ko matagalog. Okay. So, sino po ba dito sa atin ang nunood dati ng Batibot? Ayan, men, men, nakahalit tayo ng aking edad. <laughs> Oh, yan na ako ng batibot. Ay, mababatibot, ano. <laughs> uh, lumaki, malumaki ako na everyday. Ano, minabangan mo yung batibot. So, meron po yung kanta sa batibot na alin-alin ang naiba. Ayan. Sige nga, kaya-kaya ito ni Ilyo, men. Alin, 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 alin ang naiba. Ayan. Isipin kung alin ang naiba. Isipin, isipin, isipin kung alin. Ayan. Huwag nga na rin masyado ni maganda yung boses ko. <laughs> okay. Pero, <laughs> pero may kita natin, simula pa bata, palagi tayong what is different. Alin ang naiba? Naiba siya. Naiba siya. Diba? We, were, are, we are trained to always look for differences. Kahit nga, diba, sa school, o, pag magsicheck ka, alin ang naiba? O, alin ang naibang color? Alin ang naibang sa, sa choices, diba? Tapos mag eliminate ka, alin ba talaga naiba? Okay? But Jesus Christ has it differently. Ang gusto niya, mag-focus tayo doon sa pare-pareho. Kasi tayo ay, palaging lahat tayo magkakaiba talaga. But does it serve us? Nakabuti po ba sa atin yung mag-focus tayo, magkaiba tayo eh. Ayoko sa'yo. Hindi, di ba? So we have to look for the similarities. Kahit na kunting-kunti lang yun, yun po yung hanapin natin. 
Kasi yung ginawa rin ni Jesus Christ dun sa Samaritan woman. Okay? Sa letter S, sabi dito, seek first to understand than to be understood. And meron ako nakita dito sa book na yan. Sabi dito, most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to, the, to reply. Siguro, pwede rin to sa mga mag-asawa. No? Bakit ka ulobe, nagsasalit pa, taka, nagkikwento ka, hindi ready si Ophelia, may sagot agad si Ophelia. <laughs> Hindi sana sabihin ko, hindi ko yan. Pwede hindi totoo, sorry. <laughs> hindi, pero sa akin din kasi minsan, yung parang bang, masyado tayong busy ngayon, di ba? In this world, I mean, in our time, ang daming nating pwedeng gawin. We're always busy. Ako po, palagi akong busy sa trabaho. So, I'm actually at full. I'm doing this most of the time. Kaya sa trabaho, nai kong ginagawa. Tapos, may lalapit sa akin. Ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Hindi ko siya talaga, hindi ko siya talaga pinapakinggan. Gusto ko na agad mag-reply. And most of the time, I cut the person off. Para bang hindi pa siya tapos sa sinasabi niya, sasagot na agad ako. Para lang matapos na ba, umalis na siya, makapagtrabaho na ulit ako. Pero hindi pala tama yun. Ayan. So, mali na naman ako. Sorry, Lord. Okay? Sabi dito ni Lee James, sa chapter 1 verse 19, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Sino magsasabi na mahirap yung sinabi niya? <laughs> diba? But first, quick to listen. Kailangan, ano kapag may nakikausap sa'yo, nakaganon ka agad yung attention mo, diba? Quick to listen, slow to speak. Talagang hayaan mo siyang matapos. <laughs> Magsalita yung mga pasyente. Na, ano pong problema niyo? Arabang, alam ko na, wag tama na. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Pero hindi, we like to, parang pong next patient na kasi. Ang dami na yung sinasabi. <laughs> And, uh, and we also have to be, be too slow to become angry. Oh. Nagagayat na agad tayo. Bilis natin gano'n, you know? Wala sa... In our very busy world, one thing we seem to not have enough of is time. Totoo naman, di ba? Kagaya ngayon, patapos na naman ng Friday. <laughs> Hence, we are always rushing from one task to another. Kaya madalas, pati yung conversations natin ay rushed. Di ba po? Most of us cut people off while they're talking so we can respond and make our point. Ay, ayun nga, ako din talaga very, very, <laughs> palagi ko yan nagagawa sa, especially sa office, para lang matapos na. But I think we have to follow what Jesus did. Jesus showed us that we have to let the other person speak. Diba, sabi, di, sabi dun sa reading natin, um, He just listened. Actually, alam niya yung dapat niyang sabihin. Alam niya yung tama. Pwede niyang sabihin na lahat dire-direcho yung babae. Pwede makinig na lang. But he actually allowed the woman to speak. Kung ano yung gusto niyang sabihin, ano yung point niya. And I think that made a difference. Kaya na ano din yung woman kay Jesus Christ. Because para sa kanya, wow, um, para bang binalue niya kung ano yung sasabihin ko. Every one of us wants to be heard. Diba? Pa, shh. <laughs> Gusto mo ba yung, shh? Excuse me, shh. Parang go away. Hindi eh. We want, we have, we're all smart. We, we have brains. We're all, uh, parang bang sa ating mga pinagtatrabahuan. We know. Diba? Kaya pag tayo may sinashush ng isang tao, parang bang, ah? Ngayon ako sasabihin eh. Hindi pa nga nyo narinig. Gusto kong sabihin eh. May point naman ako eh. Diba? Diba? So we always have to allow the other person to speak. So maybe once once we allow the people from the out group, yung mga ayaw nating pagsalitain, uh, and to allow them to speak up and be heard, then maybe we will realize na yung ating mga prejudices are baseless. Di ba? Nung nakipag-usap na si Samaritan woman kay Jesus Christ, para mag, ay, parang mali naman pala yung nasa isip ko about, about them. Or about, di ba? So, yung iba na na iba na talaga yung isip ng ating Samaritan woman. And then finally, yung letter T, the way to deal with prejudice is transcend barriers. Ayan. So, sa Great Commission, sabi ni Matthew 28 verses 19-20, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything I have commanded you. Sabi dito, go and make disciples of all nations. So, kung all nations pala yung utos sa atin ni Lord, <laughs> hindi pwedeng may prejudice tayo against sa ibang lahi. 
or people who are different from us. Diba? Otherwise, wala tayong madidisciple. Wala tayong mababaptize. Kung we're just, kailangan yung pareho ko lang. Kailangan yung pareho ka lang. Pero hindi. Ang sabi ni Lord, all nations. So we should be able to, you know, kahit na may barrier, may language barrier, magkaiba kami ng, magkaiba kami ng kulay, magkaiba kami ng religion, magkaiba kami ng sex. It should not really matter. Kasi po, ang ating great commission is to preach Jesus Christ to everyone. Diba? To preach the gift of salvation from Jesus Christ sa lahat ng tao. And I don't think we will be able to do that if we allow our prejudices to hinder us, to stop us, to control us, yung actions natin. In the three years of Jesus' ministry, He showed us that His purpose, and that is to offer mankind's gift of salvation, always took the utmost priority. Kahit na awayin siya ng mga Jews, awayin siya ng mga Pharisees, sabihin siya, bakit siya nakikipag-dinner sa tax collector? Sino yun eh? But Jesus Christ doesn't care. Kasi ang ano niya, kailangan niyang to be able to preach and show everyone the love that He has for them. Okay? So, i-wrap up ko lang po yung ating mga, yung ating mga, yung ating acrostic. So, C, Challenge, we have to challenge our prejudices, hate division, renew our minds, identify similarities, and focus on it rather than our differences. Seek first to understand, then be, to be understood. Transcend barriers. Okay? As Christians, as persons called to be ambassadors in this world, may we lay aside our prejudices and see people through Jesus Christ. Jesus' eyes. O, oh, Open our hearts and lives to all people, irrespective of their group, whether the out group, in group, it doesn't matter. We value one another because we are all valuable in God's eyes. And letter E, extend God's amazing grace to all because God's love knows no boundaries. Okay? So, meron lang po akong gustong i-challenge sa inyo. Ayan. I want you to leave, this with, leave you with this challenge. Actually, challenge ko rin po ito sa sarili ko. And this is my challenge. Palagi pag nag-preach po kasi kami doon, palaging may challenge. Kasi, di ba, we're not just supposed to be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. Okay? So, ito pa yung challenge ko para sa inyo. Para kasali rin kayo. Kung nagsasalita lang ako, dyan lang kayo. <laughs> So, yung challenge po sa inyo ngayon is you have to think of someone you hold a prejudice against. Ay, ako, malamang sa trabaho to. And try to establish a relationship with that person. Spend time. Kagaya ng ginawa ni Jesus Christ. Listen. Kagaya ng ginawa ni Jesus Christ. And talk to that person. So, we have to do it exactly the way Jesus. So, punta tayo sa isang lugar na pinupunta ng taong nyo and maybe start a conversation with that person that we hold a certain prejudice against. And then, number two, kapag nagawa na natin yan, hopefully gawin natin, share the, experience of, uh, share the experience with your life groups so that they will be inspired to do the same. Kasi po yung, sina, yung sa ating story, ano po yung nangyari nung sa MD? Di ba, after ni mama niya makapag-usap kay Jesus Christ, ano ginawa niya? Pumunta siya sa... Sa village. Tapos kinausap niya yung mga tao. Hello, hello. Ito yung tao, sinabi niya lahat yung ginawa ko. Tapos sila naman, parang, oh, sino nga ba to? Sino nga ba to? So yung sinabi rin na Takel, sabi niya kayo na is, and she wants to invite other people so that they too will come to know yung, yung kanyang nararanasan, experience, and that is God's love. So ganyan yung ginawa ng Samaritan woman. That encounter with Jesus Christ changed her her mindset, her attitude, her actions. Wala na siyang pakialam kahit alam niya ang masama ang tingin sa kanya ng mga tao. She has to share Jesus Christ to them. And that she did. And you know what happened? All of them, actually many of them, believed in Jesus Christ. Amen. So ang memory verse po natin, so when we say memory verse, ito yung pwede natin sa ulo. Dapat kasi as Christians, nang sa ulo po tayo ng, mem- ng Bible verses. Um, in Galatians chapter 3, verses 27 to 28, For all of you who were baptized into Christ have bloated yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord.